This is the Ryder and Lisa podcast. Brought to you by Yegg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. Uh, early morning roll call. We want to do that? I do, because you never know who's listening. Earlier this morning, we were talking about how we were making up lanes on the road over the weekend. And Ryder casually mentions... Was Plowy McPlowface watching football, taking the day off? And what do you know on the text line? We get Plowy McPlowface saying, yep, I was absolutely watching football. Yeah, the the main operator of Plowy <laughs> McPlowface just happened to be listening. That's so I'm glad funny. we didn't chirp harder. No, you know, of like No, we they were... do good work. They do good work. Yeah, but uh, it is pretty wild to get that text. So you never know who's listening. You never know. Maybe McDavid is listening on his way to practice this morning. McDavid, can you text in like you did the the last bunch of times? No, don't lie. Yeah, uh, true. I had Jordan Eberle reach out to me once and said he thought a bit that I did was really funny. I don't think you were on the show yet. Okay, um, I'm the reason why... Go ahead. Several Oilers called in once and requested a song, so yeah. you're welcome. No, I know that as well, <laughs> but I'm just saying that... That was just out of the blue. I had Jordan Everly, and he was my favorite player at the time, so that was a pretty big deal. Ryder resents me because an oiler tried to get with me once, and Ryder wishes it was him. <laughs> true Pardon me. Fact. That is it's, not at is all true. true. It is true. You were uh, jealous. Yeah, I wanted you to get with him, and then I'd just roll with you over to his place because he lived with some other oilers <laughs> at the time, and I was planning to just go start up a game of road hockey and see what happens. Just wait outside his house. You know how weird that is? Just go take shots. <laughs> they, the, Just, NHL players flock to that. They would hear that noise and be like, I should go play some road hockey. And then all of a sudden I could just I bring my goalie gear. I'd let them rifle shots at me. It would have been the best time ever while you were inside just getting your shots. Anyway, early morning <laughs> roll call. Who's listening this morning? What's your name? <laughs> Because Plowy McPlowface is listening, and that just made my week. That's all I need to know. Yeah. So if you can try, good. if you can one up that, that'd be great. <laughs> one thousand dollars. It's Ryder and Lisa's one K wordplay. Brought to you by Out of Bounds Restaurant. We are joined by caller seven, Christine, who got through for the very first time. But Christine, you and your daughters have been trying for so long. You have Ella and Addie in the car with you right now. Yes, yes. Hi, girl. Hi. Hi, sweeties. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope to give you a thousand bucks. That's what will happen if <laughs> all of your words match with all of your teammates' words. So you're going to pick either Lisa or myself who will leave the room. That is your teammate. Mm-hmm. Then we'll give you five words. You tell us the first word that comes to mind for each. We'll invite them back in, play the game with them. And uh, yeah, 25 bucks per matching answer and a thousand if you get them all. Christine, who's your teammate this morning? Okay, girls, who's our teammate? Lisa. Okay, okay. Good luck. Thank you. I will start the timer after I give you the first word, okay? Okay. And Lisa is out of the room, so let's get this rolling. The first word is mountain. Climb. Boots. Feet. Pillow. Sleep. Sunrise. Uh, morning. And boss. Work. All right. Nice work. Let's get Lisa back in here. We're winning money. <gasps> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! She did very good. Okay. It's because of the support system she's got with her. That helps. All right. <laughs> What's the first word that comes to mind when I say pillow? Sleep. (laughs) (laughs) What's the first word that comes to mind when I say mountain? (sighs) Mountain. Climb? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 50 bucks. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say boots? Oh, man. Feet? Yeah. Yes! Yes! 
75 bucks. You're doing great, Lisa. Woo! <laughs> Two more to go. Okay. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say boss? Work? Yes! 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 <laughs> I knew it. I, I, know, I knew it as soon as you started smiling. <laughs> One more word and we got a thousand bucks. <sighs> it's gettable. Is it? Yeah. I'm so excited. But I'm also very nervous. Okay. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say sunrise? Mm. There's two words that I'm thinking of. There's two options here. I'm going to go with my gut, and I'm going to say the first one that came to my mind, which was sky. Oh! No, what, oh, what no. is it? What was it? Morning. Oh, I was going to say sunset. Like the opposite. Okay, so it wasn't even on your radar. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Girls, you still picked up 100 bucks. Thank you so much for playing Ryder and Lisa's 1K wordplay. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great game. Oh, Good job. Oh, man, we were so close. Yeah, yeah, and it's gettable. Like, it more, pains me. I think morning would have been the answer I probably said for sunrise. Dang. Uh, yeah. Okay, great well, game. better luck tomorrow. Again, this is brought to you by Out of Bounds Restaurant. Avril Lavigne just announced Avril's greatest hits tour is coming through Roger's Place on September 16th. Shout out to anyone else that's listening that also made Avril Lavigne their personality for a stretch there. Or trying to be with Avril Lavigne. I'll never forget reading in Seventeen Magazine. She was asked about her hair routine and how she gets it so shiny. And she said she puts mayonnaise in her hair. Guess what I did that night? No. And guess what didn't work? Guess what didn't work? And guess who smelled like a sandwich for two weeks? Me. Is that uh, how you got your nickname, Ham Sandwiches? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not true, by the way. That would be a great <laughs> nickname, though. I saw a tweet yesterday that was like, I swear to God, if I have to do laundry again. <sighs> and like, of course, you're going to have to do that again. It just never and... ends. And also with Groundhog Day approaching, doing it all over again. Yeah, you have a sweet spot for Groundhog Day. Not many people care at all anymore about it, hey? No one's ever like, did the Groundhog see its shadow? Old people do. I, do they? Well, I think it's because they didn't have, like, the internet. So it was like, they got entertained by looking at groundhogs. Yeah, like, I can push a button <laughs> in, the, in my vehicle and just say, hey, Siri, is spring coming early this year? And she'll mm. just be like, yeah. And give you the actual answer. Or she'll yeah. say, no. <laughs> <laughs> what movie scene traumatized you as a kid? I love Ashley's comment. The scene in The Lion King when Mufasa dies. Oh, spoiler. But come on. That was decades ago side note ashley goes on to say that scene definitely instilled major trust issues towards my brothers <laughs> and like <laughs> didn't uncle? trust anyone especially near cliff <laughs> uh sarah says the scene in my girl mm. i don't want to spoil he needs his glasses yeah he doesn't have his glasses that was a very sad movie <laughs> littlefoot is coming up and the fate of littlefoot's mom do you uh did you ever watch peewee's big adventure no Okay. I feel like that wouldn't be scary. That sounds like quite a joyful no, film. No, Large Marge was very scary. Have a nice day. <laughs> be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> oh, it's the music. <laughs> yeah. That's just unnecessary. Why well, her like eyes pop out of her head? And when I was a kid, like that came out, I think like late eighties, maybe. I was terrified. Brenna just texted in saying the ring when she would call in, say, seven days. I can actually do a really good ring sound. Do you want to hear it? I think that's oh, the movie. Here we go. Is it the ring where they make the sound coming the out of the drain? What movie is that? That's the ring, No, right? the ring's when she comes out of the TV. Okay, well, what's the one that where the girl's in the shower and you hear the, the evil girl go, Okay, people are shutting off the radio right? right now. The Scary. grudge. The grudge. Yeah. Thank you. The horse scene in Never Ending Story. Absolutely couldn't agree more. Is that that one's with, from Lindsay. Does that have to do with quicksand? It's like mud. Okay. I'm yeah, no. pretty sure. Yeah, we I'm, don't need to talk about it. If the horse is getting injured, I'm not interested in the movie. So I've never seen that one. Well, that's, yeah, Yellowstone. 
I try, I was like, I think you're going to like this show. I'm not watching a cowboy movie if a horse gets injured and you're like, you don't have to worry about it. Like, the horses are well taken care of. The first scene, <laughs> a horse dies. So there's a new invention. I think you can actually, like, support it on the... Oh, crap. What's that called now? Brain fart. The internet. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, when you can like support an upstart company with an invention idea, Kickstarter. There okay, we go. Okay, okay. And it's for allergy sufferers. And you put it on for like the first 15 minutes of your day. And it kind of like sends an electric current through your nose. And then it really helps with most allergies. So it's like a protective layer. Yeah, I don't know. Like it just Weird. zaps the crap out of you for 15 minutes. Now, most people would be like, nah, I'd rather have the allergies. It probably gives you an allergy for the first 15 <laughs> minutes of your day. <laughs> but, the, but like, I, I, some people would absolutely do this if it actually worked. Don't you remember parents used to get their babies together when one of them would have... Chicken pox. Chicken pox, and they'd have a chicken pox party. Yeah, those were lit. That's where that song came from. Which one? The na 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 no. Oh, maybe I made that up. <laughs> you did make that up. We are counting down things that slap so hard. <laughs> this after being told last week we were too old to use the expression slap like that. Too bad. Too bad using it every day, actually. Watch me go. Mm -hmm. At number seven for things that slap so hard, solving the Wheel of Fortune clue or the Jeopardy question before the contestants. I've never done that. Yeah, you're bad at I'm so bad at it. At those games. I've game even shows. tried to watch an episode beforehand to memorize the answers to sound smart in front of a room full of people. Still forget. I'm like, what was it again? All right, next up, at number six. When you really have to go and then you get to go. Where? Or things that slap really hard. P. At number five, for things that slap so hard, hugging a crush. That's really good. Yeah, tell me that's not the best. Is there anything better? Do you want to hug? At number four, when you have something pesky in your teeth that you finally get out. Oh, the release. Uh, at number three for things that slap so hard, laughing really hard with a friend, especially if you said the thing that you're laughing about, that you're both laughing about because you feel like a legend. I feel like this list could go on and on and on. Like seven is just not enough. Like Liz just wrote in saying when you check out an online order and there's free shipping. Like that slaps. Yeah, that slaps. Well, maybe this can be a recurring. It should be. Like come up with a new list of things that slap really hard. Because now I'm starting to think of so many things. Joyous like, things. Like imagine doing a click and collect for your groceries and whoever chose your produce crushed it. Like they deserve a raise. You got the best avocados. Yeah. You got the best bananas. That would slap. That would slap. At number two, your dog greeting you when you get home. The best. Number one for things that slap so hard also has to do with when you get home. But this is after you've been away for a while and your first sleep in your bed, your own bed. Or that feeling when you get home and you just put your sweatpants on immediately. Sure. I'm telling you, this list, it just will never end. It's so good. Okay, so keep these rolling in. We're going to compile them. To start every week, we need to do the top seven things that slap so hard. So what did you learn over the weekend? I learned I can work out twice in one day. I never thought I'd see the day. Then it happened. So I got up early on Saturday, went to hot yoga with two of my girlfriends, which, by the way, if you own a hot yoga studio, dim the lights. Mm -hmm. Why is it bright in here? Nobody behind me needs to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so went to hot yoga it was great and then later that afternoon hit up the gym and yeah did yeah some good for you by the cardio. way cardio like I, I was feeling very good do you ever just go and pretend that you worked out but just go sit in the sauna no do you do that no you so do that <laughs> Ryder goes in the sauna first so he looks really sweaty and then he just goes and sits at a machine and like winks at girls <laughs> I've heard that. That's the rumor. Everybody's Is talking it? about it. Okay, okay. I learned that uh, if I know the comment section is going to be a tire fire, I no longer go and seek it out. What? Really? Yeah. I thought I, it, was the, it would be the opposite, like you're looking for the drama. Not really. Like, I feel like I've detached enough from the internet. I've grown enough. Okay. I've put myself in bad moods enough. 
by just going and reading visceral nonsense mm-hmm. that now I can actively choose to avoid it. Like You might as well yeah. just like read the headline and keep scrolling or refresh the timeline exactly. and look at like a cute bunny eating a raspberry. So I was proud of myself for realizing that I didn't want to go and deal with that. Have you ever seen that video? The bunny eating the raspberry? Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, that is good content. Actually going to go watch that right now. Me too. What movie scene traumatized you as a kid? I love Ashley's comment. The scene in The Lion King when Mufasa dies. Oh, spoiler. But come on. That was decades ago. Side note, Ashley goes on to say, that scene definitely instilled major trust issues towards my brothers. <laughs> and like <laughs> Didn't uncle? Didn't trust anyone, especially near a cliff. <laughs> uh, Sarah says the scene in My Girl. Mm. I don't want to spoil He needs his a glasses. Lot of these. Yeah. He doesn't have his glasses. That was a very sad movie. <laughs> Littlefoot is coming up and the fate of Littlefoot's mom. Do you uh did you ever watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure? No. Okay. I feel like that wouldn't be scary. That sounds like co- quite a joyful no. film. No. Large Marge was very scary. Have a nice day. <laughs> be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> Oh, it's the music. <laughs> yeah. That's just unnecessary. Why her, like, eyes pop out of her head? And when I was a kid, like, that came out, I think, like, late 80s, maybe. I was terrified. Brenna just texted in saying the ring when she would call in, say, seven days. I can actually do a really good ring sound. Do you want to hear it? I think that's oh, the movie. Here we go. Is it the ring where they make the sound coming the r- out of the drain? What movie is that? That's the ring, right? No, the ring's when she comes out of the TV. Okay, well, what's the one that where the girl's in the shower... And you hear the the evil girl go. Okay, people are shutting off Scary, their radio right? right now. The Scary. grudge. The grudge. Yeah. Thank you. The horse scene in Never Ending Story. Absolutely couldn't agree more. Is that that one's from with, Lindsay. Does that have to do with quicksand? It's like mud. Okay, I'm yeah, no. pretty sure, yeah. We I'm, don't need to talk about it. If the horse is getting injured, I'm not interested in the movie. So I've never seen that one. Well, that's, yeah, Yellowstone. I try, I was like, I think you're going to like this show. I'm not watching a cowboy movie if a horse gets injured and you're like, you don't have to worry about it. Like the horses are well taken care of. The first scene, <laughs> a horse dies. I'm going to tell you about something. You get to ask me a few questions on it and then determine if I'm telling the truth or if I completely made something up. Deal. A robot baby debuted at the couture fashion show. A robot baby. So... Did it crawl down the runway? Uh, no, it was one of the models was carrying said robot baby. Is this a new invention for people that only want one kid and they want their baby to have a friend? Dunno. Just saw the baby, but it's it looks like its head is actually like kind of moving. Uh, it's the size of probably a two-year-old, and it is covered in jewels. It's covered in jewels? <laughs> Yeah, like it looks like the entire thing is jewels, the entire baby, but it's moving like a baby. It seems to have an older cell phone on its one arm. I don't uh, know what that's for. And is this, does it match the model's outfit? Like, does it look like it comes with the outfit? The model doesn't appear to be wearing any jewels at all. She's just carrying like an accessory baby that's also a robot. That also has a phone attached to it. It looks like the baby needs comfort. It looks like the baby is... Upset. Uh, yeah. And she comforts it by... With a phone. The baby has a phone on its arm. <laughs> this is dark. I feel like this is something that's like a message. That's like when your baby's crying, a lot of like newer parents are just like, here, watch TikTok. <laughs> okay, I think that... I think this is so absurd that it's real. That like, you wouldn't make it up. Correct! Woo! I don't like it, though. Lisa's right. I don't like this. Let me see. Have a little peek. Oh, I don't like that at all. Bedazzled baby. No. Yeah, yeah. If anybody wants to. Shut it down. (laughs) Shut it down. If anybody wants to see this bedazzled baby, you can Google it or uh, feel free to hit us up and I'll just send you the tweet that I just saw. You don't want to see it. (laughs) We have a fresh face in studio who's going to be rocking the intern position for our show for the next bit. 
Welcome to the studio, Mac. Yeah, thanks for having me on here and giving me a job, I guess. Yes, yeah, seriously. You're welcome. I mean, you're doing it for free, so. Yeah. But it's part of his schooling. <laughs> like, this is a whole semester, is it not? Yeah, I'm here for like four months. Feels Sweet. a little bit greasy to me that schools can do this, where what they're like, mean? hey, pay us and then go work for somebody for free. What's the teacher doing? S- exactly. Just napping? Chilling. Mac, we need to come that's up with. a good name it's already. It's a great name. It's a great <laughs> name. But we need a radio name for Mac. So that's, that's catchy, where yeah. our, our listeners need to step up on the text line. Yeah, it needs to be catchy, memorable. Yeah. Something that you probably won't go by for your entire career, but like maybe it maybe. sticks. Okay, so what we need to do now is learn a couple things about Mac. Yeah. And then the listeners can get brainstorming on some awesome names. Uh, you're tall, you have a beard, you're a big sports fan, you're wearing a Quebec Nordiques hat. Do you like... Fleetwood, Mac? Yeah, they're pretty right. good. Fleetwood. No. I like that one. That was a suggestion on the text Oh, line I mean, yeah. Noah. I love listener <laughs> suggestions. I just shut down yours. <laughs> Two out of the three days for sure that you've been with us, you've worn a sweater. Is that a normal part of your wardrobe? You know, I get chilly, especially in this office. Yeah, he's Throwing cold. Throwing a sweater. Okay, he so runs I was, cold. I was thinking like cardigan. Do we like that? Or like Mac cardigan? McCardigan? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, or so, jumper because that's another name for a sweater. Apparently, I'm just Mac, doing some googling. Mac in C, don't like it. Big Mac seems like something that you're probably used to, right? You've heard that too many times. Yeah, I played hockey, so I heard that one all my life. Well, and you're tall, so Big Mac is actually a great nickname. But we don't want people right. listening in, and then all they want is a burger. Yeah, if if people said Big Mac around me like five or six times in a day, I would eat one every day. Me too. Yeah. So that can't work. Mac Attack, Mick Mac, Cardi M, MC Beardy Mac. Like these are, we are getting so many weird <laughs> suggestions. Like, like I want a nickname like Flip Flops, where people are like, oh, that's the guy that wears flip flops all the time. He's not wearing flip flops. I know. We are trying to grind out an alias for our uh, new intern, Mac, who's in the house. And thank you to everyone that's texting in and welcoming Mac. Yeah, yeah. Because it can be intimidating, you know, walking into even a new job in general is scary. You don't know. Any, like, I don't even think any of us showed you how to work the coffee machine, have we? I didn't get the code for the door until my third day. So Oops. I- <laughs> So I had to find ways to get into the into the building. Uh, Mac was scaling the side of Center 104. <laughs> my goodness. No wonder he's wearing mountain climbing shoes. Yeah. How else is he supposed to get in here? This is my fault. This is so embarrassing. Yeah. Anyway. We think we might have a nickname that could work. Yeah. Because, you know, you want to potentially take something that you could use forever if mm-hmm. it sticks yeah. and you get well known. There's two options I have here. You said you rarely wear a belt. <laughs> so I was thinking we could call you Butt Crack Mac. His name's Mac. Yeah. Or, for those who are just tuning in. Or Butt, yeah, Butt Crack Mac. So it's just too, Butt Crack. Butt Crack is funny. I like it. Yeah. But you probably don't like that one. I probably wouldn't go by that okay. no, you wouldn't, the rest but, of my career. <laughs> so here's the thing about Mac is he's played hockey. He's had all the nicknames that originally come to your mind. Big Mac. Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy. Yeah. Mac Attack. Like those are, they're not memorable, Mm -hmm. right? They're just, those are kind of like low hanging fruit. What if we called you, now just hear me out for a second, Roni. Well, that's like your new last name. Yeah. Mac Roni. Mac A Roni. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know about the A. I just think Mac Roni is super funny. Mac Roni is hilarious. And then we just call him Roni when we're casually talking about Mac. Now just picture this. Close your eyes for a second, Mac. Okay. You you go by Mac Roney and then you get a new morning show and they hire somebody who goes by the alias Cheese. What would your morning show be called? Probably just Mac and Cheese in the morning or something. Yeah. Ooh, Mac and Cheese in the morning or Mac Roney and Cheese. Mac Roney and Cheese. I, I even like the shortening of it so much that I'm never calling it Mac or Roney and Cheese ever again. Just Mac It's Roney. just Mac Roney. Okay, so where are you at on a scale of one to ten for, for, Roney. It, for liking Roney and Mac Roney? You can be honest. That was probably like a seven or an eight. No, okay. That's too pretty bad. good. Um, somebody just said Spider Mac because he was scaling the walls to get into the building. Like the fact that you didn't know how to get in for three days Again, of working here. My fault. The Ryder and Lisa podcast. Brought to you by Yegg Property Pros. Powered by Real Broker. Get a realtor who knows. Call the pros. Play 107.